Hi everyone, welcome to Chalk Talk Med where I cover high yield topics for med students. In today's video, we're going to be talking about gangrenous necrosis. So here's our outline. We're going to start with an overview of cell death and see where gangrenous necrosis fits in. Then we're going to talk about the causes and mechanisms and there are two main types. So there's ischemia and then uh, gangrene induced by a bacterial toxin. So we'll go through all this stuff right here. And then we're going to wrap up with a bonus question about a clinical pearl and just a little, um, just a little teaser. It's going to be about a crying baby. All right, so we're talking gangrenous necrosis today, uh, which is a type of cell death. So let's start with a quick overview of cell death. So cells die by a variety of different mechanisms. The main two that we learn about are apoptosis and necrosis. And as you can see listed here, these two are kind of the opposite of each other in most ways. And if you want to learn more about their differences, you can uh, feel free to check out this video on our channel right here. Um, but the point for today is that uh, you can't just stop there because apoptosis itself occurs by two different mechanisms and necrosis actually has six different types that are listed here and each of these types of necrosis actually describes what the underlying morphology is of that necrotic tissue. All right, so now let's talk about necrosis and its different tissue types. So here are the six that you saw on the last slide. Uh, first thing I want to mention here is the name. So these names can seem kind of random, but the names actually describe what the underlying necrotic tissue looks like. So they're kind of describing what the hallmark feature is of that necrotic tissue. For example, liquefactive means that that tissue is liquefied. Caseous refers to that tissue being cheese-like. Fat means that tissue has a lot of fat cell accumulation, etc. The second thing that's important to mention here is that um, each of these types of necrosis has its own specific underlying pathophysiology, specific diseases that cause them, and what the histopathology is going to look like. And those are the kind of things that you need to learn to be able to compare and contrast to be able to answer test questions about this topic. All right, so let's start with gangrenous necrosis. So gangrene directly translates to decomposition or decay. And the hallmark, the key feature of this necrotic tissue is a greenish black discoloration of the necrotic tissue. So when you see this black discoloration of necrotic tissue, that's gangrene. And an easy way to remember that, gangrene, green for this greenish black discoloration. So that'll help you remember when you see any dark green or black discoloration, that's gangrene. And there are two main causes. So we're going to start with ischemia next. Okay, so the most common cause of gangrenous necrosis is ischemia. This is going to be the one that you're going to see nine times out of 10 as a cause of gangrene. You may remember from watching the other videos on necrosis that the most uh, common necrosis associated with ischemia is coagulative necrosis. So essentially, anywhere that you have necrosis in the body, except for the brain, it's coagulative necrosis in the brain. It's liquefactive necrosis. That is very high yield. So as it turns out then, this uh, gangrenous necrosis is actually a subtype of coagulative necrosis because it is caused by ischemia, but specifically ischemia in the limbs and more specifically usually in the digits, which are the fingers and the toes, as well as in the intestines. So in other words, if you have ischemia, that's coagulative necrosis. If you have ischemia of the limbs, specifically the digits, or the intestines, that is gangrenous necrosis. This tissue is going to look gangrenous. It's going to look black. And so that is a subtype of coagulative necrosis because it's due to ischemia. Now, the main risk factors, obviously, for this type of gangrenous necrosis are going to be your risk factors for developing ischemia, which are going to be peripheral arterial disease. So, for example, things like high blood pressure, diabetes, cholesterol, smoking, older age, and family history, these are all risk factors for developing thrombosis and ischemia. Another important risk factor is going to be hypercoagulable diseases. So again, things that increase your risk of developing clots. And then finally, atrial fibrillation. That's another very important risk factor for gangrene. The reason is because in AFib, the heart is not contracting in a coordinated fashion. It's uh, fibrillating. And as a consequence of this fibrillation, it's going to be at a higher risk of developing clots or thrombi within the heart itself, which then it can shoot out. And those thrombi can embolize and cause ischemia either to the limbs or the intestines, causing gangrenous necrosis. Now there are two different types of this gangrene. Number one is dry gangrene. And here in dry gangrene, the tissue is black and dry. So the only problem you have here is the ischemia that we talked about up here. So this is just a pure and simple straightforward coagulative necrosis of the digits leading to this gangrenous finding. The second type is wet gangrene. So uh, obviously by the name here, the tissue is black and wet. So the wet is caused because there is now a secondary infection of this dry gangrene. So essentially, you can think of wet gangrene as a dry gangrene that became infected usually with bacteria. So now this is a combination of coagulative necrosis from the ischemia and a liquefactive necrosis from the secondary infection. So it's going to look like this. So at the center, you have this uh, black 
a gangrenous portion, but surrounding it, you're going to have weeping edema and erythema. So this is what makes it wet and um, suggests that there is a secondary bacterial infection. So this is the key difference between wet gangrene and dry gangrene. All right, so cause one of our gangrenous necrosis was ischemia. Cause two is completely different. So change your mindset. Now we're talking about a bacterial toxin. So what happens here is that this most commonly occurs secondary to a specific bacterial infection called Clostridium perfringes. There are other bacteria that can cause it too, but this is the most common bacterial association. This is a gram-positive anaerobe that forms spores. So what happens is that these spores are found commonly in the soil and in the environment, and usually someone can get a deep wound, and as a result of that, this spore can go in deep and contaminate deep tissues such as large muscles, as, shows, as shown right here. And then um, once it gets in there, it finds an anaerobic environment and it starts to reproduce and proliferate like this. Now the bacteria itself would not be so bad, but the problem is that it secretes a really potent toxin called the alpha toxin, which is very important for you to know because it is a phospholipase. So do you think phospholipases are bad for cells? Of course, because our cell membranes are all composed of phospholipids. So essentially this toxin is going to be cleaving and clipping and breaking down all of the cell membranes. So this is going to cause massive destruction right here in this area. So there's gonna be two key consequences of this bacterial infection and this alpha toxin. Number one, this is gonna to lead to extensive rapid destruction within the soft tissue and the muscle, because remember this is where the initial contamination usually occurs. And because this is infecting or causing necrosis of the muscle, another name for this condition is known as myonecrosis because myo means muscle. So this type of gangrenous necrosis caused by Clostridium perfringes is also known as myonecrosis. And the second consequence is that as if these bacteria were not bad enough by themselves, they also make gas. So these are gas producing bacteria. So what's gonna happen is that there's gonna be formation of gas within our muscles. And so for this reason, the other name for this condition or this disease is also gas gangrene. So this type of gangrenous necrosis caused by Clostridium perfringes, also known as myonecrosis and gas gangrene. All right, so finally now let's talk about what the clinical findings are going to look like of this uh, gas gangrene caused by Clostridium perfringes. So of course, main presenting feature is going to be severe muscle pains because that's where the infection and necrosis is mostly occurring. Uh, of course, you're going to have gangrene, which is this darkened discoloration. So it can be greenish, blackish, purplish in this, um, in this instance right here. And there's going to be severe edema because within all of that soft tissue, there's infection and inflammation happening. One key feature to learn about and, and understand, if you don't know it already, is the term crepitus. So crepitus essentially um, is something that you palpate. So when you palpate someone's uh, tissues, if you feel air in the tissue underneath your hands, it kind of feels uh, crunchy or it feels like ri Rice Krispies is the best way that I can describe it. Uh, that presence of air on your physical exam when you're palpating, that's known as crepitus. And you can also see air in the soft tissue on an x-ray. So this is an x-ray of someone's leg. So this is the femur right here, this is the tibia, and this is the fibula. And what you see outlined here by these red lines are pointing to these black areas within the soft tissue. So of course, black on x-ray typically means air. So these are various streaks of air in different uh, tissue planes. And this is indicating that there's gas in the soft tissue uh, consistent with gas gangrene. Now, clinically, this is going to very rapidly spread. This is one of those infections that can become, um, that can essentially spread really, really quickly throughout the entire limb and the rest of the body, and it can lead to septic shock. Uh, it's essentially associated with 100% mortality if not caught and treated very quickly. So it is a life-threatening emergency, and it requires pretty immediate uh, surgery to debride uh, the infected area, as well as broad-spectrum intravenous antibiotics. All right, before we finish up, let's do this little bonus clinical pearl about digit ischemia. So we've been talking about digit ischemia earlier as a type uh, of um, gangrene, gangrenous necrosis, and we essentially said that the main causes of ischemia were things that lead to thrombosis, such as uh, peripheral arterial disease and atrial fibrillation, but here's a different cause in a baby. So the chief concern here is a fussy baby who won't stop crying. So this baby is being evaluated in the ER and the astute medical student does a complete physical exam. This is a real case, by the way, and discovers that the second toe is swollen and discolored as shown here. So what's the cause of ischemia in this baby's toe? So if you want to think about this and answer the question, go ahead and pause the video here and think about it for a little bit. And then when you're ready, unpause it. I'm going to go through it here. So. This is our clinical pearl. So what you have here is actually hair, uh, but what can commonly happen is either hair or thread can wrap around the digit, so fingers, toes, or even genitals, and that can cut, uh, cut off 
circulation and it first starts with the venous circulation because that's a lower pressure system that's going to cause swelling and then that pressure is going to increase even more and then eventually it's going to be arterial um, circulation is going to cut off and over time if this is not recognized this is going to lead to ischemia and this is known as the hair tourniquet syndrome because obviously it's often hair or thread that can cause a tourniquet and lead to obstruction of blood flow so here's my pro tip always undress and fully examine everyone especially babies and this should be on your differential diagnosis for a crying fussy baby all right so let's wrap up with a quick summary less than 60 seconds so gangrenous necrosis there's a blackish uh, or darkening discoloration of the necrotic tissue there are two main causes ischemia to the digits or the gi tract and there are two types of this dry versus wet gangrene the second cause is gas gangrene and this is caused by an infection by clostridium perfringens and it's alpha toxin the main mechanisms for dry gangrene, it's ischemia only, so it's coagulative necrosis. In wet gangrene, you have essentially a secondary infection of dry gangrene, so it's both coagulative and liquefactive necrosis. And finally, in gas gangrene, it's due to the alpha toxin that we mentioned. It causes extensive myonecrosis and presence of gas in the tissues. That's why it's known as gas gangrene. All right, that's it, and that's all. If you enjoyed this video, you want to learn more about this topic, uh, check out these related videos that I've linked here. Uh, you can also search our channel, Chalk Talk Med, for other topics to see if they're covered. And finally, if there are other videos that you want to see or you just want to give some feedback, please uh, feel free to drop your thoughts in the comment section. But thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.